Hi guys, my name is Dan. This is Angle Guys. Welcome to the channel. Um, for those of you that are new, welcome. For those of you that are returning, welcome back. And for those of you that support me on Patreon, thank you so very much for your subscriptions. If you're interested in subscribing to the channel, you can go to patreon.com and search Angle Guys. Choose a subscription level and get the daily forecast over there a day early. Also, other uh, forecasts or uh, readings that are available over there every month, depending on the subscription level you choose. Um, this is a broad spectrum forecast for the greater collective, therefore it's intended for those that see it. It is originally created for the date of February 27th, which is uh, Saturday. It will be a full moon in Virgo on that evening. Um, uh, but if you're seeing it on a different date, uh, that's okay. I do believe that the message can be timeless in the sense that sometimes our higher self or our spirit guides, whatever, can help us to find this information when we need it versus when it was created for. So keeping that in mind, if you're seeing this on a date that's not the 27th, you don't necessarily have to turn it off. You may still want to watch it and see if it pertains or, um, you know, connects with whatever you're dealing with. All right, so if you're watching this and it does not connect for any reason, that does not mean anything's wrong or bad, you're not doing anything wrong or making any mistakes, it just might mean that you're working on something different than the majority of those of the people that will tune into this video at any given time. Uh, if things do resonate or it does make sense, it does fit in uh, an area of your life, certainly feel free to use it in whatever way uh, you see fit. But always use your own highest intelligence and intuition when doing when making your own decisions. After having watched any of my videos, if you make any decisions in your personal life after having watched any of my videos, know that those decisions are solely your responsibility. Um, and uh, never take anything that I say over that of a professional in their field, like a doctor, a lawyer, or a therapist. Anybody that's giving you advice, you know, that knows what they're talking about, listen to them. Okay? All right, so let's see what the cards want us to know. We're at the end of the week. God, we can't escape this card either. It's that lust card. It's the strength card. Now, this card shows up. We had the six of discs, uh, we had strength, ace of discs, the hierophant, and the seven of swords at the end of the week card, and we're at the end of the week. So this is doubling down. I sort of feel like, and this was in yesterday's reading also too, and I sort of feel like the meaning in this card and why I've been sort of confused by this card is it's ultimately major arcana, so this should be a significant day for us. It should have large and lasting impact. The It should be sort of something obvious. I think that there's an opportunity here to either act out out empowered or disempowered that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting with this card it's sort of like where I've not connected with this card I think the lust aspect of this speaks to the more base idea of us going after things that we desire and maybe being single-minded in our purpose maybe lashing out at people or being aggressive towards people in ways that we don't necessarily intend to be um, that's sort of the power of that lion that we see there the gentleness of that woman, though, is sort of the strength, right? When we're able to be vulnerable, we can be at our strongest and not necessarily need to sort of be, you know, in uh, in that position. Does that make sense? Where we have to sort of attack or whatever. Uh, what I do want us to know is that we do have the strength to see ourselves through no matter whatever it is we're dealing with. But it's like really our choice and how we choose to move forward through this. We can move through in a solid, strong sort of way, or we can move through in a greedy, fear-filled, grabbing at whatever we need sort of way, right? That word lust to me, it takes me to that state of, you know, when we desire something so much that we, we put it ahead of anything and everything else, right? And that to me doesn't necessarily have the same connotation as the strength card does. So in this deck, I feel like this card is calling out, at least in my interpretation of it, to the two different ways we can approach a situation, both being passionate, both being high, like sort of intense vibrational desire, but one is coming from a more controlled, um, strong stance, right? Grounded, and, and both are about taking action too. That's that Leonie energy. Both are about sort of giving ourselves what we want, but which way do we choose to go about doing it today? Are we going to be aggressive in nature and snatch at things, or are we going to be more calm, collected, and um, 
allow those things to sort of maybe come to us if they're if they're meant for us, right? And standing strong in that, knowing that what our beliefs are are true for us. They may not be true for others, but we don't necessarily need others to, we don't need to sway others to our way of seeing things, right? That's kind of the strength aspect of this card. The lust aspect would be us taking a stance of where we're being more aggressive about trying to prove our point and we're almost wearing ourselves down in that desire to be right, okay? So let's see, we have a lot of really powerful cards underneath this. Um, from the Sunday reading, so and strength is also one of them. So we're doubling down on this. I think that it really is important how we approach situations today, especially also with that full moon in Virgo too. That she's going to demand that we want to release things in a in a sort of methodical, balanced, uh, you know, discerning kind of way, not aggressive, not. Um, you know, there could be a little bit of room for judgment. Virgo energy can be judgmental. Uh, and a bit meticulous at times, can be a little bit nervous at times. So uh, being, being careful how we move through this transit with the full moon would be important. It's going to be significant. I can definitely say that seeing this strength card three times in the last two days. All right, so let's see what the clarifiers are. So we have, ah, look at this, the nine of wands, which is the word strength. So that's why this is called the Lust card and the Nine of Wands is called Strength. Usually to me, the Nine of Wands is depicted with a man sort of kind of coming to an end. Nines are about personal completions. It's usually about kind of being after battle or post battle, uh, having learned our lessons. I do like this because we see those wands as arrows, right? And the nine are behind them. And then we have that shining light at the top. And then uh, this appears to be like the sun and the moon. There is a balance here. We're trusting sort of our intuition. We have the sun in the top of that wand, which is that also that sign of Leo, right? Which is that strength card. We have that moon, which is our intuitive, more subconscious self. I like that there's a balance here, but I feel like we've had to work to get here. That's sort of the nine of wands. There's a struggle that we've maybe had to surpass, come through. We don't want to react to said struggle in a, in a, like, it's almost like I feel like these cards are saying, don't allow our buttons to continually be pushed in the way that they have been in the past. And we get a choice today in how we react. That strength lust card, right, gives us this option. I love that they associate the nine of wands with strength because to me, it is sort of about strength, but it's about sort of having learned a hard lesson and having come through to the other side and sort of, you know, uh, stabilizing and re being able to sort of learn from what one's dealt with and move on, right? And so, I look at this and I hear it in my mind, in my mind, what I'm hearing is, you know, having suffered the slings and arrows, and that's the sort of the nine or the eight arrows behind us. We're stronger for having dealt with whatever it is that we've dealt with, but now we need to take that strength and utilize it in a productive manner versus, you know, from a state of resentment, aggravation, or frustration. And I think that that's the sort of the vibe that's going on with these cards is it's, we get to make a choice today and that choice will be significant. The next card is the Princess of Discs. So yesterday we saw the Queen of Discs. She's sort of like a, a, I wouldn't say a lesser version, but in this deck, the Princess holds the highest position of the court card. I love this card. This is that Queen of Discs sort of turned forward now. We're looking to the now. We're in more in the present. We're not looking to the past. We don't have our back turned on anything. We can see clearly what it is we need. I love that she shows up with the Virgo full moon this evening. Uh, she would definitely be the sign of sort of Virgo, um, uh, Taurus, or um, Capricorn, right? So she's the epitome of that. She's the highest court card. I love that in this deck, they leave the princesses as sort of almost in the role of the kings because they're the fertile feminine, they're the divine feminine, and there is this sort of a strength and a power there. We see that also reflected now that I'm thinking about it in the strength of this lust card where we have the woman on the back of the lion, right? So we have the strength and the fierceness of the lion, yet the delicate and vulnerability of the woman. There's a beautiful blend there. And we have that in the princess of discs. She's got her shield. She has her staff. She's um, through the woods or through the forest on a situation. Do you see all of these trees behind her? They're similar and kind of, uh, there's a pattern between these trees behind her and the pattern of all of these arrows behind this nine of wands. This is an opportunity for us to stand in our own self-knowledge, be grounded in that knowledge, be practical about that knowledge, be aware of who we are and what we bring to the table and the value, and then act from that place.
right? Um, make decisions from that place. Be informed, be not necessarily involved or caring about what others think, say, or do, right? It's more about us and uh, the focus should be on us. The focus should be grounded. And we need to be the first and foremost, like sort of um, authority in our life, right? That's this princess of discs too. Um, there's a care and a, and a sort of a, I don't want to say gentleness. I love that she's sort of got this warrior warrior aspect to her, but there is this sort of um, self-nurturing focus that these uh, princesses or queens have where it's like we put ourselves first. And we've been seeing a lot of that with the aces this week too. And then the last card is the Ten of Cups, Satiety, which this is a beautiful, emotionally abundant, overwhelmed, like not overwhelmed in a bad way, but overwhelmed in a good way, like an emotional abundance pouring forth, feeling complete and whole with this Nine of Wands, this uh, Princess of Discs, and this Strength slash Lust card. I think that there's a definite opportunity for things to... Uh, come correct, feel right, feel like we're actually making um, the sort of right choices and understanding the good feelings behind that. Remember underneath this, we have that ace of discs, we have the hierophant, which is that intelligence. Also, that's that Virgo energy too in the hierophant. No, sorry, hierophant is Taurus, but still again, that earth energy, right? In this full moon in Virgo. The only thing that's kind of iffy is this Seven of Swords that we saw on Sunday, which we might be, the Seven of Swords to me is these these um, wands that we see behind the Nine of Wands there and the trees that we see behind the, pet, uh, the um, Princess of Discs. To me, it's like we are hopefully uh, fully releasing ourselves in this process and through this full moon cycle away from something that has either been confusing us, holding us back, causing us nothing but trouble, and maybe even... Uh, enabling us to lash out in ways that have not been at our highest good, right? Where we've maybe sunk to levels that are beneath us or that, you know, cause us uh, worry, shame, doubt, fear, whatever. The Ten of Cups indicates that, that we can let go of that and we can move forward into this new um, cycle, this new month, uh, feeling um, really kind of, hopefully, a, a sense and feeling of well-being and, um, and, uh, empowered enough to sort of make the decisions we need to make, take the steps and the action that we need to take, and, and to do so from a state that is um, empowered versus um, at the um, reaction to others or to the environment. Let, and remember also too that, that stone for this week is that honor, and I definitely see honor in all of these cards. So I feel like whatever it was that we were trying to remain honorable around or find honor within, we have achieved that if this is your reading today, if these cards resonate with you and you are on this path and these things make sense to you about how you're handling yourself in situations that may have otherwise usually um, got under your skin or got your pushed your buttons, good on you. This is, this is what we've been working towards all week. All right, so let's look to the grounding stone. Ah, love it. So the grounding stone, this is what we want to um, ground in for the day, is gratitude. Of course, that gratitude is going to help to build the, the emotional well-being that we see in that Ten of Cups. It's also going to help to build the strength that we see in that Nine of Wands, also in the strength and the um, sort of authority that we see in that Princess of Discs, right? She is sort of like, she would represent like the King of Discs, the Master Manifester. And we have that... Um, uh, ace of discs underneath this working in there so there is this like sort of idea or feeling that although maybe things have not all been right with the world thus far up until this point we've been working our way either into or out of a situation that we are now understanding the work that we've put in we're seeing the work where the sort of like the the, the we're seeing the forest from the trees so to speak uh, we're able to see the bigger picture, be grateful for what we have, and that's this gratitude that we want to ground in. Be gra grateful for, uh, even like sort of the, you know, if there's things from the past where we maybe haven't acted in our best interest or we've done things where we've sunk to others' levels, being grateful for those things because those were teaching tools along the path that got us to where we are today. And they've taught us that we don't have to do that today is sort of the feeling that I'm getting. So grounding in that gratitude again and grounding, you know, being thankful for the honor and the things that we've learned this week or maybe this month. Um, and then allowing those to be released with tonight's full moon will be very powerful medicine. 
So I hope that makes sense to you guys. That is your forecast for the day. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really appreciate all of you. Thank you guys for bearing with me. The last few days have been really sort of weirdly low energy and, and, and difficult for me. Um, I'm trying to get back on track and hopefully we'll be able to do so soon. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys all tomorrow for the new week's readings and um, and the readings to come. All right, thank you so much. And please hit the thumbs up button and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I will see you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.